Storygram Network. Hosting for this podcast is generously provided by Transistor at Transistor.fm. If you would like It's Not About Food podcast a week earlier and ad-free, please support me on Patreon.com forward slash It's Not About Food. For more information about my books, my work, and my body love cards, you can go to my website at itsnotaboutfood.com. Hi, my name is Laura Lee, and this is It's Not About Food. So it's not about food, and it's not about weight. What is it about? Everything else because it's never ever about food or weight, never ever, not even one time, not ever, ever, ever. Hello everyone, this is Lori Lee Rourke from It's Not About Food podcast. And today we're gonna be talking about something completely different. But not really, because the person we're going to talk to, I'll introduce her in a minute, is out there doing a totally cool thing for the greater good of all concerned. And really, really a wonderful art project that she has going that really is so sweet. And I just love it. And I wanted to have her on to talk about this. Normally, we talk about disordered eating and body hatred, but everything that she puts out is helping anyone with any kind of thing that they're struggling with themselves or each other. And so it's such a beautiful idea that she came up with and really does put a lot of her energy into it and her creativity. She just pours her creativity into this. And I, for a fact, know that people have found it or found these things we're going to talk about in a minute and just love them so much at this creation that she did. Anyway, so I'm going to introduce my good friend, Daniela, and she's going to talk about what she's been doing lately since COVID. Yeah. 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 2020. Yeah. And it's called The Rocks. She rocks with the rocks. The Kelly so. Rock Chick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. me. Yeah. Very cool. Yay. So tell me how you started this and why and what is it? What are we even talking about? Okay. First, I want to say I did not come up with it. That is for sure. There's a thing called kindness rocks that a lot of people have heard of. And that's when people will make rocks and they put them out in the world. There's rock gardens. There's one near here. So I didn't come up with it, but I've always been interested in art. And I started back in April of 2020. And I can't remember the exact moment. Well, I kind of do. My sister, uh, we all were in lockdown. My sister's a preschool teacher. And she was saying after everyone went home and huddled up and battened down the hatches, that they're on the corners of different blocks near preschools in the kindergarten, students had but a whole bunch of rocks, little kids made a whole bunch of colored rocks and they were in the corner and my sister took a picture of it and sent it to me. And she said, we should do this. And a lot of things I do start out with my sister sending me a picture of something. (laughs) I end up doing it. And isn't that the way? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, we should do that. And so I'd already been in, I moved to California in 2016 and I suddenly had time. I've worked full time at the time for 26, 27 years. Didn't have a job. I call that time Fun Daniela. That's when Fun (laughs) Daniela roamed California. And I had taken some art classes. I always wanted to learn to make an art journal. So I love office supplies. I love art supplies. So I would do that with a collective in San Rafael, California for a while fun with some other women. I took a class at College of Marin and I'm not good at art, but I went out and I thought I need rocks. I need to find some rocks. So I walked around in Tiburon, California, and essentially the first rocks were made out of like this hard gravel that a construction site had left there. And I painted them with acrylic paint. And I had from my art journals that I learned to make, I had these little women's faces that were already photographed and I glued them on there. And I wrote on the back, if you find this, text me. And uh, beginning of COVID, as I said, and I put them out there and nothing happened. 
So I kept doing it though, because I loved every single step. I still do. And I started putting on uh, smoother rocks. I actually went to a beach, near beach, found some rocks, painted those, put on other ones, started to decorate the rocks. And one person finally wrote me and said, this is a sign from God. It was so sweet. She said, I have been struggling and I needed comfort and I found your rock and I'm wondering if I can keep it. And I, I was like, oh, oh my gosh, yeah, keep it. That's fine. So that motivated me that the love of my art and the love of these sort of my love language is words of affirmation. I don't care how far the rock goes at all. I love it when someone says, hey, found your rock. Awesome. I love that. It just it fills me up. And they started out with just women's faces. And then finally, I started on occasion putting a little saying on there like, you go girl, or it's going to be okay, or own your awesome, things like that. And then even more people would respond. So that's how it started. And now people ask me sometimes how many rocks I've made. It's got to be, I can't even tell you, but right around one or 2% of the people write me back, unfortunately, but that's about right. But thousands, I made thousands by now. And I just want to correct you a little bit because I think that what you did do is you did come up with this idea of putting your name and number on the back. Oh Oh my God. That is like this little tiny Daniel Ahan reaching out to the world and another little person in the world gets it and reaches out her or his hand. And, Uh, you know, the connection of that, especially, of course, during the lockdown just fabulous. And I know I have taken your rocks and put them here and there. And I don't know how many of those people contacted you, but I know one person from up around Tahoe, a boy found it and gave it to his mom, right? And he was hiking with his mom and dad or something. And I just love that so much. I do too. It's so fun, but it was selfish though in a way because I thought I just want to see it would be so cool if someone wrote me back and then they do and now I have an Instagram account so I have a lot of not a lot of followers but that's cool to see that grow and I have a little gallery as you know a gallery quote unquote tiny gallery uh, in my driveway yeah (laughs) so I put them out there and it says help yourself people take them from there draw for kids in the neighborhood that love those. And I think the other thing that's really cool is how they've evolved. Like you said, at first it was just a little piece of granite and then you painted it with acrylic. And then it was women's faces. Then it was positive messages. And now I notice that they're getting a little dressed up. They'll have a little yeah. pearl necklace or a bow. A bow, <laughs> a crown, lots of crowns. Yes. So yeah, I had always drawn these cartoon ladies since I was in middle school. And my husband said, you know what you should do? Stop putting these other random ladies you find and copy on the copier. You should draw your own and put those out there. So that is mainly what I've done ever since. So they're more of my own then, obviously. So those are fun to do. Yeah. And they're every kind of person. They're every kind of woman's faces or whatever. And sometimes you just put a saying on the rock too, not even a person or a face. And I myself have gotten like a big kick out of putting it somewhere. Like I'm thinking of this island in Greece. I put it somewhere. And then I was still on that island. I moved away from where the table was that I put the rock on. And was drinking a cup of tea, watching the rock. And then finally I saw somebody look at it and then look at it again and then pick it up and then put it down and then look at it again and then (laughs) talk to her friend. And the friend shook her head and they took it. (laughs) It it seemed like she was saying, am I supposed to take this? Or Yeah, some people don't know. Some people don't know. And a lot of people get hung up. They ask me, what do I do now? They text and say, what do I do? What do you want me to do? And I said, what do you want to do? You you can keep it. And a lot of people are surprised because again, they think my goal is to have it travel the world. How they ask me, where has this rock been? I don't know. I don't really care. Do you want it? Do you like it? You can have it. Sometimes they're really gleeful. They're like, I can keep it. I said, yeah. I said, or you can leave it or you can move it. Yeah. Yeah. Up to you. Yeah. My latest one, just a couple of days ago, someone wrote, they found it at Muir Beach. And they gave it to their friend and it's in transit to New Zealand. Oh. Uh, 
So that's very fun. It's so cute. It's this little creation that you created in Tiburon in your room. <laughs> And you put it out in the world and it goes on a little journey. It's very sweet. We do a thing in the schools when I go into schools and talk about disordered eating and body hatred where I have them eat a gummy, not a marijuana gummy. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like a fruit gummy. (laughs) I'm assuming. (laughs) Yeah. Or I'll bring really tiny little tangerines in and I'll do a whole experiment with them. And I have them go really, really slow smelling the gummy and then looking at it and then feeling it and then very little, take a tiny bite of it and have it in their mouth and think about where it came from. It was at some point a little tree with a grape on it and then they took it and went through this big process. Then it went in a truck and then it went to the grocery store and then somebody put it on the shelf and then I came in and I got it and I put it in my car and I drove it to school Like this little piece of food or this little slice of tangerine went a long way to come to you. And that's, I feel, makes us feel much more connected to everything about all of this. Uh, That's a wonderful exercise for you. And your thing about where was this rock even made? The rock itself, I mean, thousands of years old from the earth. And I mean, it already traveled a long way before you picked it up. Right. (laughs) Oh, so true. I never thought of it that way, that intensely. Yeah. It had a huge life and it still continues. So what is the purpose of this? What is your purpose for doing this? The sole purpose, and I didn't have to think hard about this. I knew, I know always why I'm doing it is because I feel like in my adult life, and certainly since I moved to California and had a chance to stop working full time and think about this, is I love to spread joy, period. Okay. And then that even sounds cliche. My rocks say it sometimes, spread joy, but it does. And it's so simple. And I get such great feelings of joy just by doing it. My husband asked me once, what if no one ever picked up a rock again? No one ever cared again. No one ever texted you ever again. He said, would you still do it? And I said, absolutely. I would still do it. I can't not do it. I'm compelled to do it because it brings me such great joy. But so the, so the fact that it brings other people joy, and it does, that's what they tell me. One of the best things you can say to me is, Daniela, you have made my day or you've made my week with this rock or whatever, for any reason, but that's what we're talking about. And I just love that. And it's so easy to do. And it's so easy to not do, you know, to not enjoy. So I figure, and there's so many things during COVID quarantine and now and forevermore in the world, in life, there's so much fear and agitation and hatred of oneself and of others. This is just my little way to chip away at it. Chip, Chip away just a little bit. If you would like to have a weekly newsletter that has some information about recovery or what people are doing in the world or what I'm doing in the world and just information about how to recover and what to do and how do we have faith and trust and love and openness to our own selves, you can go to my website at itsnotaboutfood.com. Storygram Network. Welcome to One Media, One Media. I'm when you're whining with nurses. It's a place I like to call The Bleed. My name is Laura Lee, and this is It's Not About Food. Storygram Network. I joined Beyond Hunger about three years ago after my own eating disorder recovery. I've been with the Peer Ed program for over a year. I have been a peer educator for a few weeks now. Beyond Hunger is an amazing organization in which high schoolers like me get to go to schools across the Bay Area and educate teens and students on mental health, body image, intuitive eating. And I joined because it really helps people. I joined the program because I believe that the information we provide people my age is very important. Beyond Hunger has allowed me to connect with the youth in my community and reaffirm to myself what I know is true. It has given me an opportunity to educate others and inform others around my age. Um, And I just think it's a really wonderful program. 
because I want to teach other teens what I never learned. Appreciating your body through its ups and downs, navigating di diet culture, and learning about intuitive emotions and hunger. And I felt that it was super important to continue to make change in the community. My name is Laura Lee Rourke, and I am one of the founders of Beyond Hunger. My business partner, Carol Normandy, and I founded it in 1988. But for the last 25 years, we've been going into schools and talking about the issue of eating disorders and body hatred. We um, train young women to go in with us, peer to peer, student to student, and it is a wonderful program. Please give generously, thank you. I think it goes even further than we even know. When you do something out of the creative part of all of us, when we step into that arena of using that creative force that is so connected to God or spirit or higher power, whatever you want to, and also connects us all together, is you can't not do it, whether anybody ever sees it or not. It's your thing. Right. I'm addicted to it. I love it. I can't imagine stopping. Or sometimes I switch back to the other ladies, the ladies I have not drawn, just to give myself a break from my own ladies. And I, there's hundreds <laughs> yeah. of ladies, but yeah. sometimes I like to just stick. So right now, uh, this weekend, I have an old yearbook from 1947, a black and white yearbook. I don't know what school it is. I can't remember, but I got it at a flea market and I Xerox those ladies and put those on. Yeah. Oh my it's, God. It's refreshing to me. No kidding. I should bring you my old yearbook from 1969. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't yeah. ruin it. I would just copy it. You can make a little Laura Lee rock. <laughs> oh, but not just me. I mean, just everybody in the... Everybody. Yeah, yeah. because all the hairdos were so weird, you know. Yeah. Oh, the, my God. The one so in 1967, great. I guess. Probably we still had a big old bubble. We are in Texas. Big, giant sure, sure. Texas hair. <laughs> I've got some of those mm -hmm. <laughs> 60s hair dudes. Oh my gosh. And I like to write, I like to put the thing on there. I hope you feel beautiful today. Oh, so great. Obviously, I put a lot of trouble. Yeah, you know, a lot of time in there. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about another time I took some rocks of yours and I was going to Turkey and I was in the town of Kash, K A S, with a little wiggle on the top. Okay. And. <laughs> <laughs> and it's right there on the Mediterranean. It's beautiful. And there were a lot of people fleeing from the war. So there was a lot of Ukrainians and a lot of Russians, very young people who had the means and the, they could work anywhere in the world, really, as long as they had their computer. And they packed up whatever they could, put in their car or in a suitcase and got on a train and made their way to Turkey. And I had quite a few of, I take a, took about four. And there was this one coffee shop that we went to every day. And I would put one in there every day to see who would pick it up. Aww. And a lot of times be this young person who escaped with her cat and her dog and her laptop and her phone and her suitcase. And, you know, I just made it up in my mind, but I think it's really true because they'd get a big grin. And of course, Everybody in Europe speaks English, except for, like, I don't speak hardly any English. <laughs> I don't speak any language, much less English. <laughs> so, so you could know that they read it and they know what it said. And then they'd elbow their neighbor or the person sitting next to them and they'd both look at it and they'd smile. And I would think, oh, my God, this is so great all the way. <laughs> and we're thinking about you all the way in California. Here's this to make you feel better. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. And I still appreciate you doing that to bring those wherever you go. Last time you were here, you took some because you're leaving soon. Where are you going again? Spain. Spain. Yeah. So the flamingos, you're going to get some rocks. I adore doing it. I just feel like I'm a little clog in the wheel, you know, and putting it somewhere and seeing what happens and... I think people are shy and they don't want to tell you that they found it or whatever. I don't know, whatever it is, but. I always think they think that I'll try and sell them something. Uh, if I found a rock with a number on it and I've found rocks, but none of them have numbers. On no, it, so they I do not. Tell, can't tell anyone, but 
Yeah. No. And if I see anyone, like I do see different places where I go that there'll be little kids selling them, like with Girl Scout cookies. (laughs) Right. You sent me pictures of people selling them one. And I always buy one. And I always think, thank you for doing this. But nobody ever has, well, they don't want to put their number on it. You know, they're too afraid to do that or whatever. But you're not. And it's great. So far. So far. (laughs) There was a little bit of hate at the beginning, I remember. But we don't need to talk about that. And those people called me. And people text. So I never even, I don't look at my voice messages, but I saw I had four or five voice messages. So this must have been in May, June of 2020. And it was the typical, some were kids laughing and saying sexual things. So that was weird. And then (laughs) someone else said, they wondered who I thought I was. Using these rocks like this. (laughs) Yes, exactly. So who did I think I was? And and why was I doing that? And that kind of thing. What did you want? And then... Mm -hmm. Yeah, what it, yeah, what I want. And then there was, you know, there was a dick pic. <laughs> yeah, dick pic I got. <laughs> so it repays me in so many ways, Laura. <laughs> so many ways. I just, the bounty. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. A dick pic is like, yeah. well, here, this rock is hard. Here's a hard one for you. <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> Never, ever send a dick pic. Never. For no, no reason at all. Don't. Never. No one ever wants it. It wasn't related. Nobody yeah. likes it. Even people who do kind of like dicks, they do not like a dick pic. I'm telling you. But an unsolicited dick. No one wants that. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, so please funny. Stop. Yeah. Please stop. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, I can tell you about some of the people that I've actually had relationships with because of the rocks, people I've never met. Oh, to please, this day. please do. Okay. <laughs> there are a lot. So stop me if there's too many. It's, but the first one was someone was walking on Ring Mountain here in California, and they sent a picture of one of my rocks, which said, life is tricky, baby. Stay in oh. your magic. And so she took it and she said, my friend is battling a horrible disease in Colorado. And so I'm going to send this to her. And of course, I was just warmed all over. I said, that's so great. What a great friend. Thank you so much for letting me know. Since then, this woman has been battling ovarian cancer. She and I text. She's on Facebook. I sent her money for a fun run for ovarian cancer. She loves Mary Oliver, the poet, which most people do. And her quote is, tell me what do you plan to do with your wild and precious life? So on occasion, I sent her for Christmas, for example, a couple of years ago, a little little pendant that had that quote on it. I sent her oh. some rock that on it just because we we have a relationship. So she'll write me once in a while if she follows me on Instagram. She's a big one. I just made friends with a 90-year-old woman in assisted living in New Jersey. Oh New my Jersey. God. Because so her daughter great. sent a rock she found in Santa Rosa, California. And she texts. She knows how to text. She leaves me messages on my phone. She <laughs> likes things. I didn't start doing that till like two years ago. No, She's nice. She's like, like, like. I know. Like. So awesome. A little so bubble. Yeah, a little yeah. bubble, whatever it is. She's new. This other cool story I can tell you is there's a woman who lives in, I think, San Rafael. And she wrote me saying she found this thing and she likes it a lot. And how many, you know, some people ask questions. I've texted with people sometimes for two hours, no exaggeration, two and a half hours. I texted with a guard at San Quentin prison. Oh my God. Yeah. Just for fun, you know, on and off. We how, did you get, how did you get your rock in San Quentin? Oh no, no, that's not where he found it. He oh. found it. in oh. Marin Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Push it through the fence. Try not to get shot. <laughs> right. But this woman wrote me and other women, I'm assuming they're women, have said, you know, we should meet and whatever. And it, you know how sometimes your your gut just says, yeah, nah, I don't need, let's just, thanks for, and just whatever. But this woman, something about her, <laughs> she wrote me and we were teasing about maybe I was crazy. Maybe she was crazy. You know, we were, we were like, this is weird. She said, but I really want to meet you. You know, she liked my energy or whatever. And I said, how do I know he's not a freak? And she goes, well, how do I know you're not a freak? And we laughed about that. We talked about how our husbands are big. And I finally said, okay, because she said, this is weird though. My husband says it's so weird that I'm talking to you about this lunch that I want to have. And I said, well, how about this? You give my phone number to your husband. I'll give 
your phone number to my husband. If either one of us doesn't return home after the lunch, we know where we don't want to start there. But it was so funny. It's so uh, funny. And yeah. so we ended up having a lunch and it was at her workplace. She's a dental hygienist. We met at a place right there in Tiburon and I knew who she was instantly when she walked in. I could just tell she knew me. I don't know how. She just gave me a, a look. And here's the coolest part, Laura Lee. So I knew she had found a rock because she had texted it. I liked people to say, where did they find it? And send me a picture of it if they could. And they do. And she said, I need, to, she stopped and she shook my hand. No, we hugged, we hugged. She put her purse and stuff down at the table because I had gotten there early. She said, I'll be right back. I have something to show you. She went to order her sandwich. I'm just looking around. She sits down and I can't remember exactly what we talked about. She said, I need to show you something. I said, okay, what? And this was so cool to me. She went in her purse. And she got out a rock and she set it down on the table. She went in her purse, got another (gasps) rock, set it down on the table. Oh my God. Went in her purse, set a rock down. She did that six times. Oh. So to her, it was, I have to meet her now. I keep finding these rocks. Oh my God. So it was so cool. So we text each other, send us pictures of things. She invited me to a party a couple months ago. It was so fun. I have a couple others like that too. That is uh, so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have out lots of stories like that, but there's nothing bad about that. That's all wonderful stuff. I just, it's all I it. such wonderful stuff. I just am so honored to know you and so glad that we met and, oh. you know, and we've been fast friends even since that first phone call. <laughs> Yes, 2016. So we've been friends. Yes, you are a gem yourself. Oh, I think about that time during the lockdown. People were out of their friggin' minds. I had clients that were just on their last, you know, they were hanging on by a thread. And I just think about people finding these and, okay, you got this girl. Okay, I guess I do. Maybe for another day or whatever it is. Yeah. And just beautiful. So beautiful. And not all of them say that. It is extra cool when they say, one of them wrote, my mom died this morning. You know, <gasps> I was like I have goosebumps even talking about it right now. And she said, this was wonderful. Some of them send orally these huge texts. I thought it was a gum wrapper. Something told me to go back. (laughs) And then they tell all this backstory. And I post a lot of these on Instagram, but there have been a few where I feel like that's, I'm not posting this anywhere. That's, you know, I just need to keep that myself. Yeah, it's too much, but wow. It's so sweet. I love it. I love it. I did some women of color. I don't traditionally, but I did some for a place in San Rafael. It's a wonderful company called Bloom. But they are one of the kind. They help the whole family, not just the women, not just the children, not just the men, but the entire family. And it's all free. Wonderful place. I met them through a friend of mine, an art friend of mine. And they said, we need your messages, but we need them with women of color. Diversity. Yeah, the diversity. And so I had one of my students, I, I'm a professor at Diablo Valley College, and I had a, many students who, let's face it, speak fluent Spanish. So I had one, I said, oh. here's what I like to say, but can you translate it? She did. And, you know, and then I had some, one of those wonderful crayons that Crayola makes of all the different skin colors. I got some of those and I made the women that way with different ones and they love them. But then something happened where something changed with management and I never heard back and I dropped off another tray and then eventually fizzled out. But I enjoyed. Yeah. And the people who got them are the ones that made it them. Sure. That's a wonderful way. Yeah. And just, I love listening to what people do during these hard times and they're still going on. <laughs> right, they definitely have not ended. We've got residual effects for sure. Too. There's some life. And I know that my partner around COVID, he is a musician and he just couldn't stand that he couldn't play and he couldn't play with others. So he started a little thing that he did every month. He would do one thing on a Sunday afternoon and invite his musician friends and it was called music on the porch because they played outside you know and we had people come from all over the neighborhood that would hear the music and then venture through the gate and look and can we come in and I had chairs set up and everything 
And anytime I could get rocks from you, I would put those around there. So that was like another like little kind of a thing. And I have to say, I'm one of those people who I run out of rocks and I'll go over to your art gallery that you have at the end of your driveway and get a few more. Oh, <laughs> uh, of course. Anytime. anytime. Yeah, I got so loads great. all over the place. Yeah, all over the place. Love it. Daniel, I'm so glad to know you. And tell me, what is your Instagram account? It is Kelly Rock Chick. One word, Kelly as in California. I did not name myself that. My niece who set my Instagram up because I'm an old lady, she <laughs> named it. <laughs> so, and now that's what everyone calls me. Not rock people say, hey, Kelly Rock Chick, Kelly Rock Chick, I found you. I, yeah, Instagram's awesome too, because I trade art with other people who have free little art galleries all over the United States. So So sweet. You have a friend that was on a podcast a month ago and he's in Brooklyn and he makes these posters of his art and hangs them on his window in Brooklyn on the street level. And people go by and go, oh my God, are you the one who puts this out here? I just love these. I see them every day for 20 years, you know. Oh, that's so cool. I I know. I love that. You know, yay, we're doing it. So. Please keep on doing this. The world needs you so much. And I'm so happy that you came on my show today. Yes, and I am delighted to have been asked. Thank you so much. You are welcome. And we'll see each other soon. Thank you for listening. You can find me on all the social medias at It's Not About Food. And if you would like to get the show a week early and ad-free, you can become a member at Patreon. Search It's Not About Food podcast. Thanks so much. <laughs>